In this video, we'll take a brief look at how to navigate your Gmail account. Your Gmail account is split up into a couple different sections. On our left, we have our left navigation bar. Our left navigation bar contains our default labels such as our inbox, sent mail, and drafts. Any labels that we create will also appear here. For example, I've created two labels myself called coworkers and priority. Underneath our left navigation bar, we also have our chat window. Here we can chat with different people who we have chat access to. In the middle, we have our inbox. Our inbox contains all of our emails. In the top of our screen, we have our search bar. Our search bar allows us to find and look for specific emails within our inbox, and we'll talk about searching in just a few minutes. On the top right, we have an icon that looks like a little cog. When we click on that cog, we have an option of getting to our settings page. I would recommend spending about 5 or 10 minutes seeing what settings are available and seeing which ones you might want to enable and which ones you might want to keep disabled. One of the ways Gmail differentiates itself from some traditional email clients is by something called Conversation View. Conversation View groups all replies to their original message to form a thread similar to a conversation. The benefit of Conversation View is that you no longer have to switch back and forth between your inbox and your send folders and try to piece together what a conversation looked like. In the first email in my inbox, for example, I have an email between myself and Kelly. The number six in parentheses indicates that there are six messages in that thread. If I click on the email to open it, I can see the oldest original message at the top of the list and the most recent one at the bottom. So most recently I replied, yep, it's all about customization in Gmail. I can also see that there are three older messages in the middle of my thread, and if I click on three older messages, my thread will semi-expand. I can also further expand any individual message by simply clicking on it. So for example, if I wanted to see exactly what Kelly said at 9.05 a.m., I can go ahead and click on her email, and her email will fully expand. If I want to respond to everyone who is a part of the thread, what I can do is come to any message, and find the drop-down arrow next to my reply button. A drop-down arrow anywhere in Google Apps always indicates you have some options available. If, for example, I come to my most recent message and click on the drop-down arrow, one of my options is to reply to all, so I can reply to every single person who is a part of this thread. What if I don't want to reply to everyone, however, and what if I want to reply to just one single person? Maybe within this thread, I want to send an email to just Kelly. What I can do is come to a message from Kelly, in this case the message at 9.05 a.m., and then simply find the reply button. When I do that, a new window will appear where I can send an email to just Kelly within this thread. So within any conversation, I can send an email to everyone who's a part of the organization or choose to respond to just one specific individual. If conversation view is something you're not comfortable using, or if you want to go ahead and turn it off, you always can. To turn off conversation view, Find the cog in the top right corner of your screen, and then click on Settings. Underneath General, there is an option for Conversation View. Currently, I can see Conversation View is in fact enabled. If I want to turn Conversation View off, I can. Turning Conversation View off will organize your emails in the traditional fashion, which is between your inbox and your sent folder. To keep your emails organized, Gmail uses something called labels. Labels are similar to folders, however they're just slightly different. The way I like to describe what labels are is they're sort of like sticky notes for your email. So if you can imagine having a hard, physical copy of your email, you're essentially just putting sticky notes on each of those emails. To apply a label to an email, first check the box next to any specific email in your inbox you would like to apply a label to. In our inbox, we can see to the left of every single email, there is a hollowed out little square. If we click on the square next to a specific email, that email will become checked and we can apply an action to it. In this case, I might want to apply a label to the email between myself and Kelly, and specifically apply a label to it called training. What I'm going to do is first check the box next to the email between myself and Kelly. When I do that, I can see this little toolbar appear above my inbox. This little toolbar allows me to apply some actions to it. I can actually archive my mail, report this email as spam, delete it, or apply a label to this specific email. When I click on the labels button, 
I have the option of assigning a pre-existing label, in this case coworkers or priority, or creating a new label on the fly. Since this email is related to training, I want to go ahead and create a new label and call it training. When I do that and hit create new, Gmail is going to ask me if I want to nest my label. A nested label is similar to a subfolder in that it's asking me if I want my training label to exist underneath one of my previous existing labels. In this case, for example, I could have training exist within coworkers or within priority. However, I don't want to create a nested label, so I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the box next to nest label under. When I click on create, I can see this label has in fact been applied to this email by looking to the left of the subject line. To the left of conversation view, I see a gray label called training. By default, whenever I create a new label, that label will always appear gray. You can, however, always change the color of labels. And this is important because it allows you to quickly and easily identify the sort of emails in your inbox. To change the color of any label in your inbox, what you can do is come over to your left navigation bar and simply hover over the label you want to change the color of. In this case, I want to change the color of my training label. What I'm going to do is come over to my left navigation bar and hover over training. When I hover over my training label, to the right of my label name, I see a little drop down arrow. If I click on that drop down arrow, I can choose a new color for my training label. In this case, I might want training to appear in red. When I do that, the color of my training label does change, and any future emails I mark with training will also appear right as well. The nice part about using labels is that I can apply multiple labels to a single email and have that email exist in multiple different locations. For example, in this case, perhaps this email is not only related to training, but it's also related to my coworkers and it's an email it's high priority. And I want to go ahead and mark it with those two labels as well. What I can do is come over to my labels button and also check the coworkers label as well as the priority label. And again, remember, these are two labels that I've previously already created and won't be existent in your account unless you also go ahead and create them. When I click on Apply, I can see this email has been marked in three different ways, and that's Training, Coworkers, and Priority. I also want to go ahead and apply some colors to my Coworkers and Priority label. I'm going to make Coworkers blue and make my Priority label green. This email will now exist in four different locations. I'll be able to find it in my inbox, I'll be able to find it in my training label by clicking on training. If I click on coworkers, I can find that email on my coworkers label, and if I click on priority, I can find that email on my priority label. Do note, this is not creating a duplicate copy of this email, it's still just the same one instance of this email, but I can find it in four different locations. This is very important to note. Because if I delete this email from any one of my labels, it's going to be deleted from my entire account. And again, that's because it's still just the same one instance of that email. To remove a specific label from an email, what I can do is click on the email to open it. To the right of my subject line, I can see a list of all labels applied to that email. And I can simply click on the X next to the corresponding label I would like to remove. In this case, maybe this email is no longer high priority, so I want to go ahead and remove the priority label. When I do that, I can no longer find this email in my priority label, only in my inbox, in my coworkers label, as well as in my training label. For those of you who want to keep your inbox organized, there's also an organizational feature that mimics moving emails to folders. To do that, again, first check the box next to any specific email. Here, for example, I have an email from training86. Perhaps this is an email related to training, and I want to have that email only exist in my training label, not anywhere else. What I can do is check the box next to training86's email, and again, when I do that, this little toolbar will appear above my inbox. The button to the left of my labels button is a button called Move To. When I click on the Move To button, I have the option of moving this email to a specific label. Since this email is related to training, I want to go ahead and move it to my training label. When I do that, that email is moved out of my inbox, and the only place I can find it is in my training label. So it mimics moving emails to a specific folder. With Gmail, it's all about customizability, it's all about how you want to organize your emails, either by using labels or by moving them to a specific location. 
In the next part of this video, I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about archiving. Archiving in Gmail is not the same as archiving in most other email clients. Since every single Gmail account gets 25 gigabytes of storage, there is no need to ever have to compress your files and store them locally online. However, just because you're not deleting or archiving emails does not mean you don't want to have any organization or cleanliness to your inbox, so you can do what Gmail calls archiving. To archive a specific email in your inbox, it's the same process as applying a label or moving an email to a specific folder. What I can do is first check the box next to the specific email I would like to archive. In this case, I might want to go ahead and archive the email from Training 103. When I check the box next to that person's email, again, this toolbar will appear above my inbox. The button all the way on the left is my archive button. When I click on the archive button, I can see that conversation gets moved out of my inbox and I can see it's been archived. Any emails that you have archived will appear in your all mail label. To access your all mail label, come over to your left navigation bar and then click on more. Then find the label called all mail. Your all mail label will show you everything except your spam or your trash. Any emails in your inbox, any emails in your drafts, any emails that have been sent, or any emails that have been archived will all appear in your all mail label. I can easily see which emails have been archived and which ones haven't by looking for the absence of an inbox label. Any emails that have an inbox label at the left of the subject line are emails that are still in my inbox, whereas any emails without the inbox label are emails that have been archived and are emails that are no longer in my inbox. To move an archived email back into my inbox, what I can do is check the box next to that email and simply select the Move to Inbox button. That will move my email back into my inbox and it will essentially unarchive it. To compose a new email message in Gmail, we can click on the Compose button in the top left corner of our screen. When we click on Compose, our Compose the Message window will open where we have the option of sending a message. Here we can enter some recipients, we can add a carbon copy or blind carbon copy field by clicking on the Add CC or Add BCC links, we can include a subject, attach a file, and of course insert some text into the body of our message. Inserting a recipient into an email is as simple as typing in the first few characters of that contact's name. In this case, for example, if I start typing in TR, Gmail will show me a list of all contacts in my contact book that contain the characters TR. Initially, this list will be ordered alphabetically. Over time, however, Gmail will recognize which contacts I'm most likely to email and put their name at the top of the list. In this case, I am most likely to email Training53, so Training53's email is at the top of the list. And I can simply hit enter to include their email address. And I can do the same for Training50. One really nice part about using Gmail is that Gmail constantly learns your behaviors over time. In this case, to the bottom right of my address field, I see a Did You Mean field. Gmail has learned that every time I email training 53, I'm probably also going to email training 51. Gmail is warning me here that I might be making a mistake of sending an email to 53 and 50 instead of to 53 and 51. In this case, however, I do want to send an email to training 53 and training 50 as well as to training 52. Now let's say I email these three email addresses all day, every single day, all week and I was tired of including their email addresses manually every time I send them an email. I can always go ahead and save them as a contact group. To do that, I would first include all of their email addresses into the To field, and then simply click on the To button to the left of my address field. When I click on this To button, one of my options will be to save these three individuals as their own group. What I can do is give this group a name, we'll call it Coworkers, and the next time I go to send these three people an email, all I have to do is type in coworkers and all three email addresses will automatically populate. There are two different ways to attach a file to an email. The first and most obvious is by clicking on the attach a file button, which will open up a second window where we can simply double click on the file we want to attach. There is however another way of attaching a file, and that's by dragging and dropping. If, for example, I already have the folder open with the file I want to attach, there's no need for me to go back into my email message, click on attach a file, and find the file location. What I can do is simply take my file, and then drag it and drop it right into my email message to attach it that way as well. 
Do note that that drag and drop feature only works on certain browsers, and that's going to be Gmail or Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, and Mozilla Firefox. To send your message, simply click on Send in the top left corner of your screen. In Gmail, we can also use something called filters to help keep our inbox automatically organized. Filters are the equivalent of rules in Outlook and allow you to set an automated action for every email that hits your inbox. In this case, for example, I have an email from Training 102. Now perhaps Training 102 always sends me emails related to training, and I want to go ahead and mark each of his emails with a label called Training. Instead of me doing that manually for every single email I receive from Training 102, I can actually set up a filter that tells Gmail to do that for me automatically. To create a filter from an email, what I can do is first click on the email to open it. To the right of my toolbar, I see a button called More. If I click on More, one of my options is to filter messages like these. Here I can choose to create a filter directly from Training 102's email. The nice part about creating a filter directly from an email is that certain information is already pre-populated. In this case, Gmail recognizes that I'm trying to create a filter from Training 102's email, so his email address is already populated into the From field. I can also filter any emails to a specific person, any emails with a specific subject line, in this case I might want to filter any email from Training 102, and specifically any email from Training 102 that contains the word training in the subject line. I can also filter any emails with certain keywords, or any emails that has attachments. If I click on Create Filter with the search on the bottom right of my filter window, I can choose exactly what I want to do with every one of Training 102's emails. I can choose to have all of his emails skip the inbox, I can have them autom automatically marked as red, applied with a star, applied with a certain label, in this case maybe the training label. I can forward it, automatically delete it, or always mark it as important. I can also retroactively apply this filter to matching conversations. In this case, Gmail recognizes that I currently already have 13 emails from Training 102 in my inbox, and I can also go ahead and retroactively apply this filter to those matching conversations as well. If you want to have a specific email automatically go into just a specific label and skip your inbox, make sure to skip the inbox and then apply that email with a certain label. What that means is that email will not come into your inbox, but will only exist in that one specific label. The last thing I want to talk about in this Gmail presentation is the ability to search. Google at its core is a search product and it integrates the search feature into almost every application. There are several ways that you can conduct the search in Gmail. The first is by doing a simple keyword search. If, for example, I come up to my search bar and type in the word agenda, I can see a list of all emails that contain the word agenda. It's going to search through everything except my spam which means it will search through my trash, however it will not show me results for my trash. If after conducting a search, Gmail recognizes that I have matching emails in my trash, I would get a notification underneath my search results telling me I have matching emails in my trash. Don't overlook that I found many emails that have somehow accidentally got deleted that I only found because I searched for them and it turns out they were in my trash. The second way of conducting a search is by doing what's called an advanced search. To the right of your search bar is a faint little drop down arrow. If you click on that faint drop down arrow, it's going to bring up your advanced search options. Here I can choose to search in a specific location, so perhaps I want to search through all my mail, or perhaps I want to search through just my inbox, or perhaps I want to search through just my spam or my trash. I can also choose to search for any emails from a specific person, any emails to a specific person, or any emails with a specific subject line or certain keywords. I can also use the date within feature to help me narrow down my search. In this case, for example, maybe I want to look for all emails that arrived in a week from 9.05.2012. What this will do is, Gmail will only show me emails that arrived a month or a week prior to, as well as a week after September 5th, 2012. The final way of conducting a search in Gmail is by using what are called search operators. There are about 30 or 40 different operators to choose from, however these four basic ones will allow, you everything, will allow you to do everything you need to do. If for example I come up to my search bar and type in the word from followed by a colon, 
I can search for any emails from a specific contact. In this case, maybe I won't look for any emails from Kelly, and specifically, any emails from Kelly that contain the word conversation. I can do the same for two, so I can look for any emails directed at a specific contact. I can do the same for is, by typing is colon, and I can look for any emails that are starred, read, unread, marked as important, or muted. And finally, there's the has operator. So I can look for any emails that have photos, documents, videos, calendar events, or maybe any emails that have attachments in general. The search bar is a nice way to allow you to quickly and easily find that one specific email you're looking for. This becomes especially handy when you have thousands of thousands of uh, emails in your inbox. This concludes the basic Gmail training. Thank you for watching.